Hello my dear students of class 9. Good morning to all. So welcome back to your e-learning class with me once again. Today we will be starting with your supplementary reader book that is Moments. So we will be starting with the very first chapter. The chapter name The Lost Child written by Mulk Raj Anand. Before we begin the story I will introduce little bit about the author Mulk Raj Anand. Who was Mulk Raj Anand? He was an eminent Indian English writer. He is known for the popular books like Untouchable and Cooley and he wrote many other books that became very popular at, at his time even now it is considered as a part of English literature. He was an Indian English writer of the 20th century okay. and the important thing about he, him is that he was one of the pioneers. Pioneer means he was one of the beginners who started this uh, who started this Indian English literature as a worldwide thing who got the recognition internationally he got recognition internationally he was not the only person along with him there were others like R.K. Narayan we all know the name R.K. Narayan so he R.K. Narayan uh, Ahmad Ali Raja Rao so they were one of they were the pioneers of Indian English literature Mulkaraj Anand, he also won the Sahitya Academy Award in 1971. He also won the Padma Bhushan in 1968. Now his literary career actually started um, with the influence of the rigid caste system that was very prevalent in our Indian society. In his personal life also he had experienced such things related to this rigid caste system, re related to the higher caste people and the untouchable people. Okay, So he was deeply influenced by that and that made him to write the novel named Untouchables. So Untouchable is the novel of a uh, boy, a boy named Bakha and he is a toilet cleaner so he is considered to be the untouchable. So the story was about him. But today we are going to read another famous short story of him which is not related to this caste system and all which is a very simple story of a child, a little boy, okay, a little boy who will get lost in the fair. We will read about that. Now let me take your attention to some of the important aspect of this story. We need to learn what is a child's nature, how a child will naturally be, what, what will be the character of a child. So normally a child will be naughty, A child will be curious, he, has, he will be full of question, he wants to know more things, he is very curious about everything. So curiosity is one thing. Easily fascinated, he will be easily fascinated means anything he will see in front of him which is a little bit different from the ordinary things he will be interested in it he will be fascinated he will wonder about it what is it okay he will want he will like to know love to have everything another thing that he wants everything whatever he is watching whatever is interesting whatever is attractive okay he wants that he wants to have it so he will want everything wants everything wants everything interesting enjoys life another thing a child will enjoy everything no matter what situation he is no matter whatever he is watching he is going th through the road he is walking through the mustard field wherever he is he will enjoy his life so enjoying enjoying Next, happy. Happy and excited. 
this is one of the very important character of a child a normal child a normal child will be always happy he always he will always see things which will make him happy so he will naturally develop that habit of being happy and being excited with everything whatever he gets another thing with a child that is fickling nature or you can say easily distracted this is one of the very common thing about a child a child is having a fickling nature just few moments before a child will want something a child will have interest in something okay but if anybody or if any object distracts him he will easily get distracted he will forget the previous thing he will go for the next in the story also we will find the same character with the child now these are all the natural basic character of a normal child now a child is having this kind of nature as long as his life is having the most important thing so these all character these all nature is valid as long as he is having that important thing in his life which is the important thing important thing in a child's life is the parents they they are the parents so as long as the child is having the parents the child will be having a very normal life and the child's normal life will be this this is the child's normal life which is depending on the parents because because parents are the people who who are actually providing the basic requirement for a child's life what are those basic requirement first parent is providing love parents are providing love parents are providing care the most important thing parents are providing a sense of safety because for a child as long as the parents are there the child will feel safe the child will not the child won't have to worry about certain things that what i will eat today parents will take care of it where i will sleep tonight parents will take care of it so as long as the parents are above his head the child is worryless he is just enjoying his life he is just being himself so the sense of safety will come as long as he is having the parents he will also get the genuine love because they for a child a child know that no matter how strict how angry the parents be the parents love are uncomparable it is irreplaceable it can't be replaced so love care and safety these things makes a child's life normal and these things are provided by the parents and this is the reflection of a normal life so here we will get a child okay a very little boy who will be going to the fair and he will want many things on the way to the fair even inside the fair but as soon as he uh, loses his parents suddenly his world will change everything which was there important for him for a moment uh, just few moments before which were very important very interesting to him he wanted to have them he will lose interest in all those things he will be offered back one person will come he will come and he will offer that uh, want to have this do you want to have this everything whatever he wanted few moments before those that people will that person will come and the person will offer but he will keep on rejecting why now that we will come in the story it was the festival of spring from the wintry shades of narrow lanes and alleys emerged a gaily clad humanity some walked some rode on horses others sat being carried in bamboo and bullock cart one little boy ran between his father's leg brimming over with life and laughter so it was a season of spring just few um, few days before the winter was there so winter winter is fading away and as the winter is fading away with the onset of spring festivals and fairs are happening all over everywhere so in one of that 
festival in one of that fair the child along with his parents were going they were going to the fair and the child was a very happy child he was so full of life he was so happy he was enjoying himself come child come called his parents as he lagged behind fascinated by the toys in the shops that lined the way so on the way he was able to see a toy shop and as a child obviously he will be attracted to the toys beautiful toys hanging so he is stopping there to watch the toys because he was fascinated wow so beautiful so he was becoming slow the parents were going ahead of him and the parents were watching that the child is not following so the parents were calling the child come why are you lagging behind he hurried towards his parents his feet obedient to their call so the child is obedient okay the child is obedient because whatever the parents tell the child has to follow so we can also add another point here that is obedient obedient to the parents call so his eye is still lingering on the receding toys he has to leave the toy shop and he has to go he has to move ahead he has to catch up with his parents but his eyes were in the toy shop because he wanted to have one of the toys as he came to where they had stopped to wait for him he could not suppress the desire of his heart even though he well knew the old cold stare of refusal in their eyes so the child already knew if he is asking for a toy if he want if he places desire that i want to toy in front of his parents he also knows that what the parents are going to reply the parents are simply going to refuse by the look of their eyes but still he made a plea he said i want that toy he pleaded he requested please please father please mother please give me that toy please buy me that toy his father looked at him red eyed in his familiar tyrant way his mother melted by the free spirit of the day was tender and giving him her finger to hold said look child what is before you so as a father father will be always angry okay so father stared at him with angry eyes okay angry red eyes like don't you dare ask for toy anymore so whatever the thing he got the answer from his eyes okay his father was angry but the mother the mothers will be generally soft so the mother was actually enjoying the day it was a very beautiful day so the mother tried to distract him and the mother said okay leave the toy look ahead what is there so the mother is doing what the mother is trying to distract the boy's mind the child's mind because he is easily distracted he will forget about the toys whatever he will see in front of him it was a flowering mustard field pale like melting gold as it swept across miles and miles of even land a group of dragonflies were bustling about on their gaudy purple wing intercepting the flight of a lone black bee or butterfly in search of sweetness from the flowers the child followed them in the air with his gaze till one of them would still its wings and rest and he would try to catch it but it would go fluttering flapping up into the air when he had almost caught it in his hand then his mother gave a cautionary call come child come come on to the foot footpath so what he will see in front of him what the mother will be trying to show him the mother will try to distract him by showing the mustard field the yellow golden color mustard field okay all uh, because it is a spring season so spring means the flowers will be blooming so in the mustard field also the flowers of the mustard flowers has bloom means have bloomed and the entire field looks a very beautiful golden yellow color and the child was equally fascinated to see that and not only that the child was fascinated to watch the dragon flies fl hovering all over the flowers okay and he wanted to catch one of the dragon fly he wanted to catch one of the dragon fly and he was just about to catch the dragon fly which was sitting still on a flower suddenly he got the call from Her, his mother again the mother was again calling because again the boy got distracted he is coming out of the main path and he is moving inside the field he has gone inside the field so the mother is cautioning him the mother is calling him back so he missed the dragon fly he ran towards his parents gaily and walked abreast of them for a while being however soon left behind attracted by the little insects and worm along the footpath that were teeming out from their hiding places to enjoy the sunshine 
now the boy again followed obeyed the parents as they wanted him to follow them so he was following them on the footpath but very soon again he got distracted now this time by what now he is getting distracted by the worms on the footpath there will be worms worms like insect which will be coming out from their small holes coming out to take the sunshine so looking at those small tiny creatures he get again fascinated and he stops there to watch them come child come his parents called from the shade of a grove where they had seated themselves on the edge of a wall he ran towards them now the the parents have been walking for a long time so they needed some rest so they took shelter under one tree under one group of trees okay it was a shady place so they wanted him to come and join them and sit and take some rest so as the boy was going towards them a shower of young young flowers fell upon the child as he entered the grove so it was a very beautiful place a shady place full of trees so many trees so as he entered that place suddenly because of wind or something some flowers showered all over his head okay he felt a showering of flowers and forgetting his parents he began to gather the raining petals he forgot that the that his parents has just now called him to come and sit with them and he was obeying that but in the middle what happened the showering of the flowers happened and as the showering of the flowers happened he forgot the call of his parents and he started picking up the flowers whatever fallen over the ground he started picking them one by one but lo he heard the cooing of the doves and ran towards his parents shouting the dove the dove raining petals dropped from his forgotten hands so as he was collecting the flowers suddenly again he heard something else he heard the cooing of birds doves okay a beautiful dove so he wanted to see the doves that is another exciting thing for him so as he, his mind is uh, getting directed towards the dove he forgot he forgets about the um, flowers that were in his hand so he drops them there and goes to find the doves come child come they call to the child who had now gone running in the wild capers round the banyan tree and gathering him up they took the narrow winding footpath which led to the fair through the mustard fields so then what happened though um, again the parents has to continue their walk towards towards the fair and they call back they call um, they call back the child and the child was busy in finding the doves okay around the banyan tree he was roaming around the banyan tree in search of the dove so somehow the parents collected him okay took him away and started taking a narrow path towards the fair a kind of shortcut maybe now this is the before entering the fair this was the description so before entering the fair the child has been fascinated by many things so there will be a question regarding that that were in your exercise you can see the very first question what are the things the child sees on his way to the fair so you have to mention this particular things what are the things first toys in the shops then a flowering mustard field then a group of dragon flies then little insects and worm along the footpath and a shower of young flowers and also the cooing doves so these are the things that he saw before entering the fair now after entering the fair there will be a different list as they neared the village the child could see many other footpath full of throngs converging into a whirlpool of the fair and felt at once repelled and fascinated by the confusion of the world he was entering so as he was entering the fair it was very much crowded okay so many people everyone is like making a whirlpool okay a kind of confused state okay a big gathering a big crowd so the child is feeling fascinated he is wondering but at some point he is feeling this um, means not okay like wow oh, so much crowd but he is also enjoying as well as he is not enjoying both the things happening to him a sweet meat seller hopped gulab jamun rasgulla barfi jalebi at the corner of the entrance and a crowd pressed around his counter at the foot of an architecture of many colored sweets decorated with leaves of silver and gold so on entering the fair first what he sees he sees a sweet meal seller means a sweet shop shop so he was 
uh, shouting of different varieties of sweets gulab jamun rasgulla barfi jalebi and they were so attractive to him everything was displayed in front of the shop okay covered with some golden plates and silver plate platings the child stared open eyed and his mouth watered for the barfi so the child was very much i mean suddenly feeling hungry because he wanted to taste one of the sweet and especially the barfi because that was his favorite sweet i want that barfi he slowly murmured so he slowly said i want to have a barfi but he half knew as he begged that his plea would not be heeded because his parents would say he was greedy but as he uttered the word that i want a barfi he also knew what will be the answer of the parents because the parents will immediately will they will say that you are very greedy why you need barfi so he knew that he will be rejected but still he said so without waiting for an answer he moved on so he was expecting a kind of negative answer so they didn't reply if he persisted more on their answer he will get this answer only okay so he thought okay let's move on so he moved on a flower seller hawked a garland of gulmohor a garland of gulmohor another flower seller he was selling gulmohor garlands gulmohor are very common flower you can get it anywhere this is the season when you will get gulmohors a lot whenever you go through the street wherever there is a gulmohor tree you will see gulmohor flowers are lying all over the road the child seemed irresistibly drawn he went towards the basket where the flowers lay heap and half murmured i want that garland so the gulmohor color is very beautiful red orange yellow mixed a very vibrant color so obviously the color attracted the boy and he again wanted to have a garland of gulmohor but he well knew his parents would refuse to buy him those flowers because they would say that they were cheap again he also expected that his parents will reply that these are very cheap flowers why you want to waste money on buying such cheap flowers you can get these flowers anywhere so without waiting for an answer he moved on again the same way he didn't expect them to answer he moved on a man stood holding a pole with yellow red green purple balloons flying from it the child was simply carried away by the rainbow glory of their silken color and he was filled with an overwhelming desire to possess them all now now he is able to see balloon seller a man standing with a pole and the pole is filled with different varieties of balloon different colors of balloons okay and all the rainbow colors were again fascinating for this boy he wanted to have a balloon but he knew but he well knew his parents would never buy him the balloons now he also knew that if he is asking for a balloon his parents won't buy him the balloon as well because they would say he was too old to play with such toy you are a grown up boy why you want to play with balloons balloons are for kids so he will be told that you are not a kid anymore so don't demand for balloons so he walked on further so he again went ahead now he is able to see another thing a snake charmer stood playing a flute to a snake which coiled itself in a basket so he is watching a snake charmer snake charmer is playing a flute and making the snake to move with that tune its head raised in a graceful blend like the neck of a swan and the snake was just right in front of the snake charmer okay with a bended uh, just like a swan like bended um, neck okay the snake was moving with the tune while the music stole into its invisible ears like the gentle rippling of an invisible waterfall so the music was actually making the snake as if the music was making the snake hallucinated it was in, in captivating the snake the child went towards the snake charmer so the child was going ahead of the snake charmer but knowing his parents had forbidden him to hear such coarse music as the snake charmer played he proceeded farther but suddenly he stopped himself because he suddenly remembered that his parents told him not to go in front of the snake charmer because that music is not good for the ears the music is very bad it's actually not about the music it's just for the safety of the child normally uh, a child 
will be advised not to go in front of a snake charmer because the snake charmer will be handling a snake and snake is poisonous. So, it is a kind of danger. So, the boy will not, uh, a child will not understand it. So, for a child, the parents must have said that the music is not good for the ears, you must not hear the sound of a snake charmer. So, he obeyed whatever his parents told him once. So, remembering that he moved away from that place. Then there was a roundabout in full motion. Now, this is the final thing. There was a roundabout, a kind of ride, a circular ride which will be rotating. Men, women and children carried away in a whirling motion. So, everyone was there. They were riding. Men were there, women were there, even children were there. Okay, they were taking that ride and they were having a whirling motion. They were enjoying. Shrieked and cried with dizzy laughter. They were making screams. They were sh shouting with excitement because of the motion. They were getting that dizzy head and in that dizzy head they are making laughter. They are sh shouting. The child watched them intently and then he made a bold request. Now the child wanted this one for sure. So, he made a bold request. Bold request means because this is a very authentic demand according to him. This his parents can't refuse. He must ride because he has come to the fair and obviously coming to the fair he must ride one of it. I want to go on the roundabout. Please father, mother. So, he made the request a very bold request that I have decided I want to take this ride. I want to go into the ride. Please mother, father. There was no reply. He turned to look at his parents. They were not there ahead of him. So, he was supposed to follow the parents. The, follow, the parents will be ahead of him. But as he lifted his head up to see the parents, the parents were not there. He turned to look on the either side. He looked this side. He looked that side. They were not there. Still, the parents were not there. He looked behind. They were, there, were, there was no sign of them. Even behind him, there was no sign of him, them. Now the change is coming. Now the child is feeling scared. A full deep cry rose within his dry throat and with a sudden jerk of his body he ran from where he stood crying in real fear. Mother, father, tears rolled down from his eyes hot and fierce. His fl flushed face was converged with fear. Panic stricken he ran to one side first then to the other. Hither and thither, in all direction, knowing not where to go. Mother, father, he wailed. His yellow turban came untied and his clothes became muddy. So, this is the reaction. Okay, this is the reaction when he finally realizes that he has lost his parents. And once he realizes that the parents are nowhere, not even here, not there, not ahead of him, not behind him. Now, he is completely engulfed into that fear of losing the parents and this is the reaction. He started crying, he started wailing, means a loud cry, wailing means a loud cry. He was panic stricken, he was moving this direction, that direction, okay. He was keep on shouting for his parents like mother, father, he keep on crying and in that movement, in that, um, in that kind of hectic movement, his turban which he was wearing, the turban came untied okay on his shoulder and his clothes were becoming muddy because he was completely tense now. Having run to and fro in a rage of running for a while he stood defeated. His, cri his cries suppressed into sobs. Now he, keep, uh, he kept on running and after some time he was really tired and he was not able to cry like loud anymore. So he started sobbing. Sobbing means crying, uh, crying silently. At little distances on the green grass he could see through his filmy eyes men and women talking. So he is trying to look at the distance. His eyes were filmy. Filmy why? Filmy means his eyes were covered with a layer of water. So as it was covered with the tear, okay, so he is not able to have a very clear vision. He The vision was little bit watery. So it was filmy. He tried to look intently among the patches of bright yellow clothes. So, um, the parents must, one of them must have been wearing yellow color clothes. So, he was trying to spot yellow dresses everywhere. Whoever is wearing yellow dresses, uh, he is trying to focus on them. Maybe that is the parent, maybe that is the parent. He is trying to find them out. But there was no sign of his father and mother among these people who seemed to laugh and 
talk just for the sake of laughing and talking and those people they were laughing and talking okay uh, which was meaningless right now for him because he is completely tense they are not tensed those people in the fair they are not tensed but this child this child has just lost his parents he is tensed and he is watching in front of him they were not even bothered they were like talking laughing on something that doesn't even matter which is not even important it's his opinion that they, they are unnecessarily talking and laughing he ran quickly again this time to a shrine or uh, to which people seem to be crowding now he went towards a shrine shrine means a temple every little inch of space here was congested with men so the temple place was fully crowded it was heavily crowded but he ran through the through people's leg and his little sob lingering so he was passing he was entering the crowd through their legs because he was a very little boy so he was he, it was easier for him to get along through the feet of those people through the legs so he was going and he was crying mother father near the entrance to the temple however the crowd became very thick so as he was going in in the towards the entrance of the temple the crowd was becoming heavier there men jostled each other they were actually pushing and pulling each other heavy men with flashing murderous eyes they were all heavy their structures were heavy they were pushing each other as if they were fighting something okay murderous eyes they looked horrible like giants they appeared like giants in front of the little boy and hefty shoulders the poor child struggled to thrust away between their feet but knocked to and fro by their brutal movement the poor boy this little child he is trying to manage his way towards the temple but those people were so big they were moving each other they were pushing each other in such a way that in their push the child was getting to and fro the child was once going this side another again getting a kick and coming this side he might have been trampled under foot unfort means he would have gotten a very unfortunate condition he would have uh, fallen under their feet and he would have been crushed by their feet had he not shrieked the highest pitch of his voice but at the right moment he made a loud cry father and mother a man in the surging crowd heard his cry and stooping with great difficulty lifted him up in his arms so suddenly one of the man in that crowd spotted this boy hmm, suddenly noticed that a little boy is tensed he is crying he is in some kind of problem and he finally came and took that boy out from that crowd how did you get here child whose baby are you the man asked as he steered near the mass the child wept more bitterly than ever now and only cried i want my mother i want my father so normally the man who rescued the child the man asked who are you whose baby are you how you came here okay but the child won't answer anything because the child keep on telling one thing i want my mother i want my father i don't know anything else the man tried to soothe him by taking him to the roundabout so normally he knew that the child is uh, panic stricken the child is afraid the child is crying so in order to make the child normal the man tried to distract the child so what he did he first took him to the roundabout will you have a ride on the horse he gently asked as he approached the ring the child's throat tore into a thousand shrill sobs and he only shouted i want my mother i want my father so the first thing the person the stranger offered the child that is a ride in the roundabout so the roundabout was the thing one of the last thing that he wanted so boldly he made that last request to his parents and after that he got lost he felt that he realized that he got lost now he is offered that roundabout a ride in the roundabout but he is not at all interested in that anymore what he said he cried with sobs he said i want my mother i want my father the man headed towards the place where the snake charmer still played on the flute to the swaying cobra now the man took him towards that snake charmer where the cobra show was going on listen to that nice music child look how nicely he is playing the flute he pleaded 
but the child shut his ears with his fingers and shouted his double pitched strain. So, what the child did? The child just took his fingers to close his ears. He do not want to listen. He is, he does not want, he means, he do not even want to, means, he did not even want to listen to that music anymore. He just closed his ears. I want my mother, I want my father. The only thing he can utter, that is, I want my mother, I want my father. The man took him near the balloons, thinking the bright color of the balloons would distract the child's attention and quieten him. So, the man, okay, the snake charmer is not interesting the child, the roundabout has not interested the child. So, he, go, he went for the third option, that is the balloon. A child will obviously love balloons, so he expected. So, he went towards the balloon seller. So, again, that balloon was also one of the interest thing, interesting thing for that child, which he wanted few moments before. Would you like a rainbow colored balloon? He persuasively asked. So, he asked the child, do you want one balloon, a rainbow colored balloon? The child turned his eyes from the flying balloons and just sobbed. No, he do not want, um, he is not interested in the balloons anymore. So, he just turned back. I want my mother, I want my father. He do not, he does not want the balloons. He want the father and the mother, nothing else. The balloons have also lost interest. The man still trying to, still trying to make the child happy, bore him to the gate where the flower seller sat. Now the man took him to that garland seller, that Gulmohor garland seller. Look, can you smell those nice flowers, child? Would you like a garland to put around your neck? So the so, the man again offered him to buy a garland of Gulmohor, which he wanted before, but now he is not interested anymore. The child turned his nose away. He, do, he just refused to smell whatever sweet smell he is telling the garland is having. He just refused to smell. He just turned away his nose from the basket and re retained it, he sob. He saw, he, he started crying. I want my mother. I want my father. So, he started crying again and he said that I do not want anything else. I just need my mother and father. Thinking to humor his disconsolate charge by a gift of sweet, the man took him to the counter. Now, the last thing that the man did, the man took him to the counter of the sweet meat seller, of the sweet shop. What, sweet, what sweets would you like, child? Means there are so many varieties of sweet. Which one do you like? Which one would you like? He asked. The child turned his face from the sweet shop and only sobbed. But the child refused to even look at the sweets. He is no more interested in the sweets. He just turned his face away and he said, I want my mother, I want my father. So, everything, whatever he had wanted inside the fair, it has been offered back to him. But he refused he refuses each and every one of it, each and everything because he is no longer interested because the main important thing from his life that is the parents they were missing they were not with him any longer and as he as as he is feeling the absence of the parents he is feeling unsafe he is feeling the fear he is terrified Anything else doesn't matter. Anything else, he he don't he just doesn't want anything. He just need one thing which is not near him right now. That is the parents. So that is the most important thing he wanted. Now, the story ended. The ending of the story. We are not getting a conclusion. We are not getting a conclusion how the story ended. Okay, what happened to the child? The, means. The story is not completed. So, in this case, we can call this story, the ending of the story as open-ended story. Now, what is an open-ended story? Open-ended story means the writer is giving you the choice to think what will happen in the end of the story. So, it is up to you. Uh, you have to think what can happen. So, we can think in the positive side. Okay, we can think in a positive side. We can say that maybe the, uh, the person who rescued the child, the person must have um, helped him further, the, must, the person must have taken to the nearest police station to report of his missing, okay, because obviously the parents will be in search of him also. So, he must have helped the child, 
okay and finally he must have got reunited with his parents but if we think negatively if what if the person who is uh, helping this child is actually not a good person but a kidnapper if he is a kind of wrong person if he is a kind of kidnapper a kind of criminal then this person won't be helping the child this person will somehow take the child and the child will be lost from his parents forever so you can think any one of the possibilities how the ending might have happened so in this story the last question what do you think happens in the end does the child find his parents so this for this question as answer you first mention that the story had an open ending okay mention this line in the very first line for your answer the story had an open ending and if we can imagine the child must have just make a positive note the child must have found his parents because the person who looked helpful who was caring uh, the child the person must have taken him to the proper place and the person must have helped him to find his parents so you can write this next the very important question for this chapter is question number 4 why does the lost child lose interest in the things that he had wanted earlier okay so whatever he wanted earlier later on when it was offered to him why he loses interest so the reason is at first the child was having that um, the child was having his parents so he was full of life he was a he was having a very normal life and in that normal life he wanted to have all those things but when he loses his parents his world just turns down okay he feels unsafe he feels terrified he feels panic stricken by losing his parents and therefore whatever interested interested him before was of no interest to him anymore when does he realize that he has lost his way how has his anxiety and insecurity been described question number 3 so when the child got no reply from his parents he looked ahead of him he looked as he looked in the on the other either sides he also looked behind okay and finally he realized that he had lost his parents when he was not able to find them anywhere and how have his anxiety and insecurity been described this you can get from this full paragraph page number 4 paragraph number 2 a full deep cry so this paragraph will be the description of his reaction when he realizes that he has lost his parents and question number 2 in the fair he wants many things what are they why does he move on without waiting for an answer so you have to list out the things what are the things he wanted to have inside the fair starting from the burfi um, then the gulmohar garland uh, then the rainbow colored balloons then the show of the snake charmer um, and also a ride in the roundabout so these are the things he wanted inside the fair and why uh, why does he move on without waiting an uh, waiting for an answer he moves on without waiting for an answer because he knew that he would only get refusal his parents won't agree to get him anything therefore expecting that answer he moved on and first question i have already discussed what are the things so you will mention the things in a list that he sees on his way to the fair why does he lag behind now why he got slow because he was so fascinated to see those things that he stopped to watch them and as he stopped to watch them he lag behind okay so that's all for today we have completed our class go through the chapter and if any doubt please fill